Hi, I'm Dick Grousher. I'm the editor and founder of the Stony Hill Newsletter. Today we're going to talk about happiness and the search for happiness. And as we begin to talk about this subject, we come upon two old sayings that I think will be really helpful for you. The first says, we become what we think about. If you want to become a brain surgeon, for example, then you got to think about a lot of brain surgery. If you want to become a concert pianist, then you're going to have to think about a lot of piano and music, music theory. If we want to be happy, then we need to think about carefully about what what's necessary for happiness. How do we create happiness? And can we even? We'll take a look at that in a minute. The second saying is we must accept responsibility for creating the life that we are currently living. We can't assume that someone else is responsible for this life because that kind of thinking makes us totally powerless. In other words, we're just victims. Uh, the reality is that we are responsible for the life that we're living. We created it, and only we can undo it or change it to become the kind of life we want to live. Uh, so you can't have happiness and be a victim. You can't have it both ways. Either you're in charge of your life or you're not. And my encouragement, of course, is take responsibility, be in charge. We can't blame others for our present situation, for the life we're living. We have to accept the reality that we are responsible. Now, that may have been unconscious. We maybe didn't do this on purpose. We didn't create this life we're living intentionally. But we have to accept the fact that it is our responsibility now to change it. Whether it's circumstance, whether someone else created it, maybe we got stuck in a situation, <clears throat> all of those things are, are possible. So the bottom line is we have to find a way to create the life that we want. And the law of attraction says we'll attract what we think about. Or as we said earlier, we become what we think about. There is one other reality that we need to think about, and that is that we can't change anything about ourselves that we don't accept about ourselves. We have to accept whatever is before we have any opportunity to actually change it. So we may have to develop the vision of the life we want to live. We may have to develop the skills required to live that life. Uh, and we probably are going to need some spiritual practices, some ways of being in the world that accept the realities of the world. Uh, for example, uh, one of my favorite stories is the story about the little fish who was told that he, uh, that there was such a thing as an ocean. And this little fish got really kind of obsessed with this concept of the ocean. He wanted to live in the ocean. So he was told by the people around him and his um, friends that he had to work really hard. He had to study really hard. He had to pray hard. He had to do all these things, and someday he would find the ocean. Well, he did that. He worked hard, and he studied hard, and he prayed hard, and, and he was a good fish, and he still never found his ocean. So finally one day, probably a midlife crisis if I had to guess, he probably said, I'm going out in the world and I'm going to find this ocean, or someone who can help me find it. So at any rate, he swam and swam and swam, and finally he heard about this old, wise old fish, and they told he was told that if he went and visited this wise old fish that he might be able to find the ocean that he was searching for. So he went, found the old fish, and when he asked the old fish for the ocean or how to find the ocean, the old fish simply laughed and took him on as a student. 
Now, obviously, what he was laughing about was that the fish, the little fish, was already living in the ocean. He just didn't see it. So, if we think about happiness, and we think about uh, peace and wisdom and love, all of the great teachers, the great spiritual teachers in the world, if we ask them how to achieve that stuff or how to find that stuff, they're all going to laugh at us. And the reason is because we already own all there is. We have all the happiness that exists. We have all the peace that exists. What we have to do is learn to take away the veils from our ego. We have to learn to see the world and our, and our life the way it really is. And the moment we do that, we begin to recognize that What's really been in the way of, of our experiencing happiness has been our own beliefs and our own ego. So all of, the, all of the teachings and all of the stories and all of the advice that most of us get is that we have to work hard for all of this stuff. This is not true. We already possess it. Just figure out what's in the way. Become self-aware. And the day that you intentionally begin to become self-aware and look inside, you'll find the things that are blocking your vision. You'll understand that you already have all the happiness that there is, all the wisdom and all the love. That's the day that you will truly begin your journey on a path of happiness. So if today's, if today's session was helpful for you, don't forget to click the uh, link in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and it'll take you to the uh, Stony Hill website where you can sign up for, uh, to get the newsletter delivered to your mailbox.